Joining me now with more about the reimposing of sanctions on Iran is Professor David Menashri from the Alliance Center for Iranian Studies at the Tel Aviv University. Thank you so much for coming in, Professor. Thank you for having me. So my first question, let's open, you know, what do you think Iran's first initial reactions to the sanctions will be? Well, I, I tell you, the situation is for the, for the Iranians, they find themselves in very confused situation. One thing that President Trump managed to do is to make them unsecured, not knowing what will be tomorrow. So there's, the reaction is to show they are powerful, their response will be strong, we'll do A, B, and C, we'll shut uh, the Gulf, the Hormuz uh, sure, Gulf uh, from oil exporting. That's what they've been always doing when they are weak. So there is a difference between how they, what they feel and w what they say. Uh, the, 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 the crisis is very deep, regardless of the sanctions. And on the top of that, when you have sanctions that deals also with the currency, with commercial, it makes life very unsecure for the people of Iran. And it doesn't really matter what the government say, the people are in desperate situation. So is it more likely than, I mean, you mentioned closing the Strait of Hormuz and, and uh, there were also allegedly threats of uh, closing the Straits of uh, Bab al-Mandeb. Mm -hmm. uh, First of all, would that lead to war, and is that ultimately what Iran wants in order to show the strength that you're talking about? Or is it more likely that as the crisis in Iran increases, the people of Iran might, you know, maybe take to the streets more and more often, and, and it'll kind of be an implosive situation? You know, threats to, to close the straits, we have heard about it from the beginning of the war in the Gulf in 1980, mm. and took them years and years, and they didn't know, because they shut down these straits, they cannot export oil, they bring about uh, on themselves all the Arab exporting countries. I don't think that's their priority. Mm -hmm. Their problem is that this is a failed revolution. A failed revolution that people believed it will bring freedom and, and bread. Mm. It didn't bring better life for the people of Iran and there is no more democracy in Iran. Now, the, the people are uh, are unhappy, disillusionment, disenchantment, and the slogans being raised today in Iran are the worst that one could have imagined ever since the beginning of the revolution. Mm. Uh, uh, attacking the very Islamic regime and Ayatollah Khamenei, the supreme leader. Now, the expectation in the West is that greater pressure will lead to the collapse of this regime that one day this yeah. will happen, but we don't know when it will happen, because in a country like Iran, the government also knows how to deal with this kind of mm. situations, and as they said, nothing succeeds like suppress, and they, are, they know the art of suppression. All right, uh, my absolute final question, because we have to wrap it up, unfortunately, but, um, you know, it, are, are we going to see, uh, or rather, I'll put it this way, what needs to happen for the best possible resolution and what does that resolution look like? Well, I, I think that uh, the United States should not speak about change of regime, but mm. change of a policy of regime. It doesn't make, it's not, not much difference between them because if they change the, the policy as much as America wants, this will not be the same regime. What can be done, you need Europe to be on your side. Mm -hmm. Under Obama, there was a transatlantic alliance. Today, it doesn't exist. And then you need Russia and China. They were initially joined America in imposing, imposing the sanctions, mm -hmm. and they are not. So you need the entire world, but America is strong enough to pressure hardly on Iran. Okay, so again, speaking of that, now let's go back to the JCPOA nuclear deal. Uh, the United States has pressured the other countries is saying, you know, we'll sanction you as well if you continue to do business with Iran. Uh, what, meanwhile, many of the P5 plus one powers are saying that maybe they'll try and, uh, you know, fill in the gaps that the United States leaves behind to keep Iran in the deal. Do you think that that's possible? Is that even in their best interest? Well, I tell you, uh, there is a difference between what the governments of Europe say mm -hmm. and what the co companies are doing. The companies are more sensitive to the pressure of the United States. And the atmosphere is of insecure atmosphere to do business in Iran. And this in itself harms the Iranians. All right. Professor, thank you so much for coming in. It was, uh, it was an honor to meet you. Thank you. Thank you.